Module 6 and Module 7. So I've already given you your grade sa midterm. So hopefully sa finals, you could go higher pa. All right? lang class ha. So do try to participate along with the discussion. All right. So your module six class is known as your mod media preparation. So um, in, in our bacteriology lab, you are required to grow to grow your bacteria to grow your bacteria to propagate them. Padamihin mo sila. Now, with that, with, for you to be able to do that, you are required to use a media. Now, um, here are the steps in your preparation of media. Now, instead of reading this one by one, uh, I will show you a video later on, on how this is done. Okay, let's go to the four classifications of your culture media. The first one would be according to composition. Second one would be according to consistency or physical state. So this could be solid semi-solid and even in the liquid form so later i'll discuss that then according to how the media is dispensed and according to use or the function and then according to use or to function now let's start with your according to composition the first one would be synthetic or a defined culture media now the thing about the synthetic or defined culture media class is that it has uniform composition so when you say uniform composition equal equal um, nutrients equal nutrient composition so pantay pantay class yung nutrient composition niya so let's say that it would be composed of five percent agar five percent peptone and so on now this is usually commercially prepared and is used for research purposes while another type of uh media based on a composition is your non-synthetic natural empirical culture media now this one the composition is unknown it may differ from one laboratory to another in terms of uniformity so sa lab natin class this is the one that we would be most uh may encounter natin as a medtech itong non-synthetic now in your non-synthetic kasi class in your non-synthetic, there is no uh, exact exact content of the media. Um, if you're the one, you are the one preparing it. 
depending on the SOP of your laboratory. Then the major ingredient class is the peptone. Major ingredient is the peptone. So do remember that class. Kapag synthetic or defined culture media, this is commercially prepared, has uniform composition, and is used for research purposes. While your non-synthetic is precise composition is unknown, may differ from one laboratory to another in terms of your deformity, and peptone is the major ingredient. Then we also have your tissue culture media. So this is for obligate intracellular bacteria. So when you say obligate intracellular, does anyone have an idea what does that phrase mean? Obligate intracellular. Okay, may natin. Um, what does the word obligate mean? Required obligatory. All right. All right, so it's required. When you say intracellular, what does it within the cell? Sir. Within the cell, okay. Within the cell. So this is a bacteria. So your tissue culture media class is used for bacteria that is required. That is re required to stay inside a cell to grow. So kapag outside just class ng tissue or ng cell, they would die. So for obligate intracellular bacteria, they are required to stay inside a cell to grow or they are, are required to use a living tissue for them to survive. Now, inclusions dito class is your cell lines, HELA 229 cells, embryonated eggs for cultivation of viruses, live laboratory animals such as your armadillo and foot foot fads and earlobes of mice for mycobacterium leprae so class uh if you're gonna have your research thesis and one of your topics would be on propagating bacteria certain bacteria now depending on the type of bacteria you could actually use this cell lines, embryonated egg, and live laboratory are animals. But as undergraduates class, I do not recommend that. Bakit? Kapag ito ang ginawa nyo, if you're going to do this, this is very tedious. And marami kayong paperworks na kailangan gawin. And one of those paperworks is that you're required to undergo training in what we call G. CP. Now, in GCP, this would mean good clinical practice. So, tuturuan kayo class ng mga dapat, ng mga do's and don'ts when you're handling live lab animals and other um, research important stuff. This is usually done by UP, University of the Philippines. Alright, so again, for tissue culture media, for obligate intracellular bacteria, include cell line, embryonated eggs, live lab animals such as armadillo, foot pad, and earlobes of mice for mycobacterium leprae. Now, let's go to your consistency. Now, sabi ko kanina, there are three types. You have the liquid, the semi-solid, and the solid media. So, in your liquid medium, there is no solidifying agent. Now, the solidifying agent class sa media nyo is known as your agar. Now, in your liquid media, there is no agar. Example of your liquid media is nutrient broth, brain heart infusion, and triptychase soy broth. While your semi-solid, so semi-solid siya. So this one has agar but in very small amounts. Semi-solid media contains 0.5 to 1.5% agar and is used to study bacterial motility. Now, if you recall, nung midterms nyo, I talk about yung SIM. 
Yung sim nyo is a semi-solid media na kapag nag-stab kayo sa kanya, imagine this would be your sim, pag in nyo siya, makikita nyo na merong mga fuzzy edges dun sa stab site. So that is a sign of your motility. And then for solid media, contains 2 to 3% agar. Okay? So again, pag liquid media, no solidifying agent, no agar. Pag semi-solid, a very minute amount of agar, 0.5 to 1.5%, and used for bacterial motility. While for your solid, this contains 2 to 3% agar. Now, according to how medium is dispensed. Now, class, when you say medium is dispensed, kung how you put it, how you put it, in tubes or in plates. Yung sa lagayan niya, class. Now, um, we have two types of uh, material or equipment where you could put your media. The first one would be the plate and the second one would be the tube. Now, sa plate, class, you will just distribute it in a sterile Petri dish. But sa tube class, there are very many variations. Iba-iba ang variations niya. So do remember, kapag plate class, you just distribute it. Ibubuhos nyo lang yan in a sterile Petri plate or Petri dish. But for the tube, now, the first one would be your broth. Now, how would you make a, a broth? Now, you would make a broth by storing it upright at 90 degrees angle. So kapag broth class, this is in liquid form. And you would store it upright at 90 degrees angle. So vertical position. Katulad nito. This is your example of your broth. Now, we also have your slant. Now, your slant class is a solid media. Now, it is tilted at low angles at, until it hardens. So merong dalawang angle. There are two types of hang angle that you have to consider when it comes to slant. The first one would be your 5 degree angle, which is used for aerobic microorganisms and for daily use. So if you're going to be asked in your exam, what angle is your slant if you're going to use it for aerobic microorganisms? The answer is 5 degree angle. Another angle class for your slant is your 20 degree angle, which is used for anaerobic organisms and aerobic organisms, and for culture storage. So class, when you say anaerobic microorganisms, what does that mean? What does it mean, anaerobic microorganisms? It doesn't utilize oxygen, sir. Okay, does not utilize. So basically, anaerobic microorganisms does not need oxygen to survive. Well, your aerobic requires oxygen to survive. Okay. And another character, another variation class of your tube. Oh, wait lang. Let me show you pala the slant. So this is the appearance of your slant class. So depending on the angle, depending on the angle, the slant could be produced. So again, kapag 5 degrees for aerobic, pag 20 degrees, anaerobic microorganisms. Then we also have your butt or your dip. Now, the, the difference lang naman class with your butt uh, from your broth. Actually, similar lang sila class. The only difference is that yung butt nyo or yung dip, dip, dip nyo is in solid form. While your broth would be in liquid form. Now allow the stand that allow the butt to stand in an upright position until the agar hardens. So again, kapag plated, distribute it in a sterile petri dish. Kapag tube, it could be in broth, it could be in slant, it could be in butt or in dip. Now another variation class is a combination. Combination of butt of a slant and a butt. So you're going to tilt this at less than 45 degree angle to have a butt lower part 
and a slant upper part. It can be used to examine both aerobic and anaerobic organisms. So this is your slant and butt. So you have the lower part in the butt and an upper part in the slant. Any questions? All right. And then according to use or function, so the um, your media class would have different function. Now let's go through them one by one. The first one would be through general purpose or the simple media. So these are the one you routinely use in the laboratory. Supports the growth of pathogens and non-pathogens. Example would be nuclear agar and broth and Triptychase soy broth. So, itong nutrient agar class, this would be the one that you're going to encounter the most in the future. Once you're working na in the laboratory, you would commonly encounter nutrient agar. Then we also have your enrichment media, which is used to enhance the growth of a particular bacterial pathogen from the mixture of organisms by using nutrient specificity okay from the word enrichment class meaning you're going to enhance the group so kapag, if you're gonna look at it in a in a let's say you were using an enhancement media na plate you would notice that the target organism would be the most abundant most abundant and most prominent the reason for that class is because it has a specific the reason for this class is because it has a specific nutrients nutrients meant for the target for the target bacteria again your enrichment media class would enhance the growth of your bacteria, making the colony most abundant and most prominent. The reason for that, because your enrichment media has specific nutrients meant for that specific bacteria. Your enrichment media class can also serve as a transport medium. Example would be your selenite F broth, your GN broth, and your cap. Next, we have your supportive media, routinely used in the laboratory, supports the growth of most non fastidious bacteria without giving any organism a growth advantage. So, can anyone tell me what does the word fastidious mean? And the meaning of fastidious class? Any ideas? So, ang fastidious new class are these are difficult, difficult to grow, difficult to grow organisms. They are require special nutrients. Sa case nito class, yung supportive media nyo supports most mga easy to grow bacteria without giving any particular organism a growth advantage. Examples would be nutrient agar and your saborodes dextrose agar. Itong saborodes dextrose agar new class is primarily used for punjai. And then we have your differential media, which allows the visualization of metabolic differences between groups of bacteria. So basically, class, this will just differentiate Group A from group B. From group B. So example class would be your group A, uh, mga group A nyo na streptococcus from your group B and so on. 
can be used as a primary isolation media. Example would be your Maconky, EMB, and SSA and blood agar. So your Maconky naman class, this is would differentiate lactose fermenters, fermenters from non lactose fermenters. While your SSA or your Salmonella Shigella agar would uh, differentiate Salmonella from Shigella. Another one would be your selective media, which contains one or more agents that inhibit all organisms except those being sought. So this is a media that can grow only a single microorganism. So isang organism lang class or isang microorganism lang yung igogrow niya. Example would be your PEA, your SSA, and your EMB. Now, they have inhibitory agents such as your dyes, your bile salts, your alcohol, your acids, and your antibiotics. So dyes, bile salts, alcohol, acids, and antibiotics, these are your inhibitory agents for the selective media. Now, um, may mga media kayo class. You have medias with two or more functions. So we have your selective and differential, selective and en enrichment, and nutritive and differential. So kapag selective and differential class, an example would be your maconky agar. Maconky agar with sorbitol, ectoic enteric agar, thiosulfate citrate bile salt, also known as your TC. BS and your A7 and your A8 agar. Then there's also BCYE with antibiotics, gram negative broth, Regan Law, Todd Dewitt with antibiotics, and your nutritive and differential SBA. Now, the most commonly used culture media class na may use nyo is your blood agar. Now, your blood agar plate uses a triptychase soy agar as the base. Uses 5 to 10 percent defibrinated blood. Sheep, horse, and rabbit can be used. Human blood should not be used after autoclaving cool to 45 degree centigrade. So the best one would be your sheep followed by your horse and the least effective would be your rabbit. Class, itong blood agar plate nyo, um, just to share to you. Kapag nag-practice na kayo, once you practice being an intern, this really isn't technically followed, itong sheep, horse, rabbit nyo to. What you'd be using, class, is your, still is your human blood. Human blood nyo pa rin ang gagamitin. But then again, mas maganda pa rin if you would use your sheep, horse, and rabbit blood. Then you would autoclave it. Then after autoclaving, cool to 45 degrees, then add the blood. Now we also have your chocolate agar plate. Now this is the same as your BAP. But this one is for, is it, is a, for isolation of Neisseria and Haemophilus. It would contain factor X and factor V. Now, itong factor X nyo class, factor X is also known as your heme. Now, can anyone tell me what is him based on your hematology? Has this been discussed to you? What does him mean? Anong ibig sabihin ng him class? Iron, sir. All right, it's the iron. So where does this iron come from? Where does it come from? Okay. So okay, let me help you. This is your RBC. Now, when your RBC is degraded, nasira, or it's destroyed, what is produced, class? What is produced? 
or what is release rather? Anyway. Iron, sir. No, no, not yet iron. Bilirubin. No, not, 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 your right. him and globin. All right, it's your hemoglobin. Okay. Now, what happens now if your hemoglobin is degraded? What is release or produce? <laughs> Sige, kaya niya glass. Go, go. Hula, come on. Your bilirubin, sir? No, not, wag, wag, mo na, wag mo na yung bilirubin. Um, all right now there are two products here the first one is your globin your globin is this is the protein part diba? this is the protein part now another one would be your heme your heme as you call it is the iron so remember, class, huh? if your RBC becomes degraded, it will release hemoglobin. After hemoglobin naman is degraded, it will release heme and globin. And the remaining products of this would now lead to your bilirubin and so on and so forth. Man. Uh, I, won't, I won't discuss kasi sa CC na yan, haba ng ano. But anyways, your factor X class is known as your heme. While your factor V is known as your NAD. Can anyone tell me what does NAD mean? What does your NAD mean, class? Okay, so your NAD class is known as your nicotinamide adenine, nicotinamide adenine, adenine dinucleotide. Now, this is often seen in the dinucleotide. Now, this would be often seen in your NAD. In your... In your Nucleus, sorry. All right, back on topic. Now, after autoclaving, you have to cool it to 50 to 60 degrees, then put in the blood. Now, now 50 degrees class to 60 degrees is considered mainit yan. It's considered hot. So when that happens, class... Your hemoglobin, your RBC, would denature, magre-release siya ng hemoglobin, and that would release your hemin. And when that happens, class, it would become chocolate in color. That's the reason why it's known as your chocolate agar. Now, another one would be your maconky agar. Now, yung maconky agar nyo class would contain bile salts and crystal violet. So, sabi ko kanina, as I said earlier, this would be to differentiate lactose fermenters from non-lactose fermenters. Kapag lactose fermenters class, they would appear pink-red. Kapag non-lactose fermenter, they would appear clear so look at this picture. Now this is your lactose positive. So they would appear pink. While your non-lactose would appear clear. Now there's a variation class of your Maconky agar wherein you would be adding sorbitol. So sorbitol is used to differentiate E. coli 0157H7. So this is your lactose positive for E. coli. Then we also have your eosine methylene blue, also known as your EMP agar. Contains lactose and dyes. E. coli produces a unique metallic sheen. 
<laughs> okay, Miss Calvo. All right, Ecoli produces a unique green metallic sheen. Class, so do remember this. Whenever you would encounter the word EMB, itong media na to, tapos it would be asked, um, what is the appearance of your Ecoli in EMB? It is It produces a unique green metallic sheen. So, yan yung green metallic sheen niya, class. This was asked as a board exam question. What type of media would produce a green metallic sheen? It would be your EMB. And the one related to that would be your E. coli. While your lactose fermenters would appear violet. And non-lactose fermenters would appear clear. So do remember those colors, class. Kapag makongki, lactose fermenters would appear pink-red. <coughs> Non-lactose fermenters would appear clear. <coughs> For your EMB, they would appear violet. Well, non-lactose fermenters would appear clear. Another one would be your mannitol salt agar. So this one contains 7.5% sodium chloride and is usually used for the isolation of staphylococcus. So this would become positive for your staph aureus. So MSA class would be your, for your staph species. Then let's go with your culture media with innate antibiotics. Now, itong mga to class, this 4-1, itong Tayer Martin, modified Tayer Martin, Martin Lewis, New York City agar, these are for your Neisseria species. So, Neisseria mo siya. Now, um, it would contain antibiotics class. Now, yung antibiotics nyo, depending on its purpose, uh, it would usually inhibit three types of organism. Inhibits gram, pus, gram, neg, fungi. And in some cases, class, a specific bacteria. Mamaya i-explain ko yung specific bacteria na yan. Okay, let's discuss your Tayer Martin. Now, your Tayer Martin class would contain the antibiotics V, C, N. Now, V stands for vancomycin, inhibits gram-positive. Cholestine inhibits gram-negative, and your nistatin would be for fungi or your yeast. So, do remember these three antibiotics class, ha? V, C, N, V, vancomycin for gram-positive. Polystine for gram negative and nistatine would inhibit yeast or fungi. Now, another one would be your modified Tayer Martin. Now, when from the addition of the word modified, you perform an additional or you added an additional antibiotic. In this case, class, in your modified Tayer Martin, it's still the VCN, but this time you would be adding trimetoprim lactate, which would inhibit the swarming of proteus, of the proteus, proteus bacteria. Okay? So, Tayer Martin, VCN, modified Tayer Martin would be VCN plus trimetoprim lactate, which would inhibit proteus. And another one would be Martin Lewis. So this time class, you're using vancomycin for gram-positive, cholestine for gram-neg, and you would be using, and you would be adding trimetoprim lactate for the proteus. But this time, you have a different antibiotic for your fungi or your yeast. You would be using aniso my sin. Well, for your New York City agar, same lang din class. Vancomycin, cholestein, trimetoprim lactate. But this time, you have a different antibiotic for your fungi or yeast, which is ampotericin B. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, for your Tayer Martin, we have your VCN. For your modified Tayer Martin, we have your VCN plus trimetoprim lactate. 
for Martin Lewis class, napalitan lang yung napalitan lang yung antifungal. Still the same, vancomycin, colistin, trimethoprim lactate, but for the antifungal, it is anisomycin. For your New York City agar, the antifungal naman is amphotericin B. <clears throat> Okay, any questions? Okay, if there are none, class is all about inoculation. So when you say inoculation class, you would be start, uh, this would refer to um, applying, applying the bacteria. To the media. So in, imagine this would be your plate. This would be your plate. Now, you're not just gonna put it like this, class. Hindi mo siya ikakalat lang basta-basta. There is a proper inoculation technique for this. All right. So first, we need to understand the different types of culture. Now, there are around six types of culture, class. The first one the one that you're going to encounter the most in your workplace would be your pure culture. Now, from the word pure, this would only have a single species. So, a single single type of colony. Single type of colony. Well, your mixed culture class originates from different species so more than two more than one more than one type of colony more than one type of colony while your scenic culture is a culture of parasites grown in association with other microbial associates so this would be your parasites with unknown microorganism. Then we also have your polycynic, which is parasites associated with many known microorganisms. So we have your parasites plus known Organism, microorganisms, many known microorganisms. Then we also have your monocenic culture, which is a culture of parasites in association with a single known microorganism. So we have your parasite plus a single known microorganism and then a scenic is a pure parasitic culture so parasites lang siya pas without any bacterial associate or metabolizing cell now class yung sinasabi ko dito ang parasite this does not technically mean yung mga entamoeba nyo no it's not like that your parasites here class could refer to fungi and to other um, organisms aside from your bacteria. So, pwede siyang mga protozoa, pwede rin siyang mga um, moss and other ano. Again, your pure culture, single type of colony of bacteria, mixed culture, more than one type of colony of bacteria. Your scenic culture, parasites with unknown microorganism. Polycenic, parasites with, with many known microorganisms. Monocenic, parasite with a single known microorganism. And a scenic culture would be a pure parasitic culture without any bacteria. All right. Here's an example of your pure culture class. So they would have the same color, even the possibility of the same um, size. 
but mostly class ang ano lang naman ng pure culture is that it has the same color while your mixed culture has different color sizes even the appearance is different so do remember your pure culture from your mixed culture now there are different methods of inoculation class now um, as you know, meron kayong dalawang type of media, yung plate and yung tube. Now, depending on the on the on the method on the play on the media na ginamit nyo, you would have different inoculation techniques. So let's discuss first yung plate method or sa plate. So in the plate class, there are two types. We have your strict plate, semi quantitative. So in your strict plate, semi quantitative class, sample is strict on the agar using a zigzag pattern clock strict technique so when you say clock clock strict you would be following the clockwise direction so imagine this would be your template nyo kunwari class now you're going to divide this into four quadrants so quadra, sector 1, sector 2, sector 3, sector 4. So S1, S2, S3, and S4. Now normally class, you're going to strict it like this. Yeah. Then, when the thing mo dito, you're going to resume on the sector 2. And pag the thing mo dito, you're going to resume naman into sector 3 then sector 4. So that is your strict plate semi-quantitative method. So this is the one most commonly used commonly used to class for your um, plate, plate media. Now, um, your strict plate semi-quantitative would only work for metal inoculation loop that is sterilized after each step. So, kailangan class, let's say this is again your S1, your S2, your S3, and your S4. Now, nag-start ka. Now, prior to going to S2 class, you need to sterilize. And how would you do that? You would sterilize class by flaming the loop. If you flame mo yung loop, after flaming the loop class, pag medyo malamig na siya, resume mo. You're gonna continue. And then, flame nyo ulit before you proceed to your sector 3. Then, flame again before you proceed to your sector 4. And if you would use four disposable inoculation loops. So again, your strict plate semi-quantitative would only work if there is a metal inoculating loop that is sterilized after each step or four disposable inoculation loops, one for each clock position. Now, excuse me. Now, there would be your so-called reporting data class. Now, you would give it a score of one plus if there are less than 10 colonies in your S1. So let's say class ang colony nakita nyo na tumubo sa colony nyo sa S1 is 5 colonies. Then there is no growth sa quadrant 2, sa quadrant 3, saka sa quadrant 4. That is considered 1 plus. Now, you would report it as 2 plus if there are less than 10 in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So, 5 colonies sa quadrant 1, 5 colonies then sa quadrant 2. And then, no growth sa quadrant 3 and then quadrant 4. You would report that as 2 plus. Kapag naman 3 plus class, it is greater than 10 sa first and second, but less than 10 sa third quadrant. So, let's say sa First quadrant mo, you were able to see 19 colonies. 
sa second quadrant nyo, 22 colonies. But in the third quadrant, 4 colonies lang and no growth sa fourth quadrant. You would report that as 3+. plus. Kapag naman 4, class, 4 plus class, greater than 10 sa first 3 quadrants. So, 19 dito, 22 dito, tapos dito 24. Then sa last quadrant, greater than 5. So, um, nakakita siya ng mga 9. You would report that class as 4 plus. Okay. So, do remember this reporting. Now, another strict plate method after your semi-quantitative is your quantitative strict plate. Now, this one would use a calibrated loop. So when you say calibrated loop, it has a measurement of 1 UL or 10 UL. Used for tissues from burn victims and urine culture. So dito class, um, this is used for your urine culture talaga. The inoculation loop is touched to the middle of the agar plate from which the inoculum is spread in a line across the diameter of the plate. So ganito siya class. Imagine this would be your plate. You would start at the middle. Go up, then go down. After that class, you, you can strike it. Yeah. Without flaming or re-entering the urine, loop is drawn across the entire plate, cross-stroking the first inoculum streak numerous times to produce isolated colonies. So, yun ito. Yeah. Para better understanding your class. Mas ma-appreciate niyo yung quantitative. So, ikalat niyo muna siya sa central part. Then, you would strike it. Passing through the line over and over again till you reach the bottom. Like this. So, this is primarily used for your urine culture and for those that are burn victims. Mga nasunog yung balat. And another one would be your spread plate class. So spread plate is where in a small volume of diluted sample is transferred onto the center of the agar plate and is evenly spread across the entire surface using a sterile bent class root. So dito class is that you're going to add um, the sample. So imagine this would be your plate. You would add the sample first. Then you would add the media. Then incubate nyo na. After incubating class, you're gonna see two types of colonies. Yung surface colonies and yung... Oh, sorry. Mali, mali, mali. Sorry, sorry. Iba iniisip ko. My bad. Inisip ko yung poor plate na ano. Okay, so spread plate class, imagine this would be your media. So this has already the media. After that, you're gonna add the sample. Mix nyo lang. Mix evenly. Then, incubate. What you're going to see class are surface columns. So this is your spread plate. So media, sample, mix the sample, incubate, then you would have your surface colonies. Another one would be your pore plate. Now sample is diluted in a distilled water several times to thin out the population sufficiently. The most diluted sample from the original sample is mixed with melted agar and then poured into the petri dish. So, basically, class, ito siya, ito yung plate. You would have here the um, undiluted sample. Yung original sample. Yun. After that, you're going to add the media. After adding the media, you're going now to add the diluted sample. After adding that class, you're going to see two types of colonies. 
subsurface colonies and your surface colonies. So I hope you understood the difference between your spread plate from your pore plate. A pore plate class, you're going to add the sample, undiluted sample, then the media, then the diluted sample, and then you're going to incubate to see your subsurface colony. Kapag naman spread plate, walang dilution, you're just going to see surface colonies. Then we also have your liquid bulk. Now, you, this would require um, using a sterile pipette or a sterile inoculating loop if the sample is collected directly from the agar. So, kukuha kayo class, simbawa may mga colonies dito. You're gonna get a portion, then you're just gonna dip it. Isasaw-saw nyo lang sa doon class, sa liquid plate. For the slant naman, sample is strict in a zigzag pattern using a sterile inoculating needle. So kapag um, kapag brought, you're gonna use a loop. Kapag slant, you're going to use a needle. Then you would be streaking it in a zigzag pattern. So you could produce this class. Kapag naman bat class, you're just gonna stab the needle. So again, kapag um, brought, Loop, kapag slant, needle, kapag butt, needle, needle din. Sample is stabbed into the agar using a sterile inoculating needle. Approximately two-thirds from the surface of the agar. So do not go all the way class hanggang tulo. Just two-thirds from the surface of the agar. And then we also have your butt slant. So as a butt slant, stab nyo muna. So you're going to stab first and then streak. Sample is stab first in the butt part, then streak with the use of a sterile inoculating needle. Okay, procedure. Um, I won't go through this one by one class. I'll just show you a video para mas ma-appreciate nyo. So this is the aseptic technique plus the inoculation of broad tube, slant tube, and stab tube. Welcome to our lesson on aseptic technique. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to grow bacteria in the different... Now, class, um, do remember that whenever you're going to perform inoculating of media, even in media preparation, to always observe your aseptic technique. So basically, class, ang aseptic technique nyo, before you would get the sample, you would have to flame the loop or the needle, flame the opening of the tube, or the plate where you're going to get your sample, then uh, after you've uh, cultured or inoculated the sample, flame nyo ulit yung takip or yung opening, and then flame the needle or the loop. Ganun lang siya umiikat lagi. Flame, ulitin ko ha. Pag inoculating, let me repeat it. Kapag sa inoculating ng mga tubes nyo or ng media nyo, follow your aseptic technique. So you would start by flaming the loop or the needle, 
followed by flaming the opening of the tube or the plate where you will get the sample. After that, kunin nyo yung sample. Inoculate nyo sa media. After inoculating, flame the opening. After flaming the opening, flame the needle or the loop that you have used. So let's watch. Some forms of culture media that we had in a previous lesson. Growing them in a broth tube, on a slant tube, in a stab tube, and on a petri plate. We start, of course, by sterilizing our inoculating loop. So again, we hold the inoculating loop in our hand, kind of like we would a pencil. We stick it in the back to incinerator, hold it in for a full 10 seconds. You want the whole wire and the beginning part of the handle in the back to incinerator. Then we're ready to remove our bacterium. <clears throat> now this is a tube of E. coli, one of the bacteria you want to grow in today's lab. Remember, we always pick the tubes up by the glass, never by the caps, so the tube doesn't fall out. We start by removing the cap with a little finger of the loop hand. We flame the tube for three seconds to prevent unwanted microbes from getting in. We remove a loop full of the bacteria. We flame the tube for three seconds. We put the cap back on and set it down. And now we have the E. coli on our inoculating loop. Now we're gonna grow it in this tube of tryptocase soy broth. So this is our sterile medium that we wanna grow our E. coli in. We we'll remove the cap of the sterile medium, flame it for three seconds, put in the E. coli, flame it for three seconds, Put the cap back on, and now the only thing growing in this tube should be the E. coli. No outside contaminants, no contaminants got in our pure culture. Now, of course, remember there's still tens of thousands of bacteria clinging to the loop, so we end the procedure by re-sterilizing the loop, putting it in the back to incinerator for 10 seconds. We also want to grow our bacteria in a slant tube. So we start out the same way. We always sterilize the inoculating loop before we do anything. Put it all the way into the bacteria incinerator till the handle is just inside the glowing part. 10 seconds. Then we take our tube of bacteria. Now, once again, this is a tube of E. coli. We remove the cap with the little finger of the loop hand, immediately flame the tube for three seconds, remove a loop full of the E. coli, flame the tube again, and put the cap back on. So now we have the E. coli on our inoculating loop. We're gonna streak it on a slant tube, so <clears throat> once again, we grab the cap in the little finger of the loop hand, and we unscrew it. This is a screw top tube. We flame the tube for three seconds. We're going to hold it so the auger is down and flat and the loop is flat. We're going to start at the bottom of the streak and just do a little squiggle as we pull it out. Then we flame the lip of the tube for three seconds. We screw the cap back on, keeping the cap a little bit loose so that air exchange can occur. And of course, we burn off any remaining bacteria on the back to incinerator by putting it in for 10 seconds. We also want to grow our bacteria in a stab tube. Once again, we start by sterilizing the loop, 10 seconds in the back to incinerator. Take the tube of bacteria you want to grow, our pure culture, in this case it's E. coli again. Remove the cap with a little finger. Flame the tube for three seconds. Remove the loop full of the E. coli. Flame the tube for three seconds. And replace the cap. Then pick up the stab tube. Remember, pick it up by the glass, not the cap. Remove the cap. Flame it for three seconds. 
And then we're going to stab the uh, right down the center of the tube about half to three quarters of an inch like that. Flame for three seconds and replace the cap. In this case, we use a loop for the stab. <clears throat> now, you may be wondering, class, pocket loop yung gamit niya instead of the needle. Now, normally, depending on your SOP, needle talaga dapat ang gagamitin mo. But there are some labs na okay lang gamitin ang loop. The problem with the loop kasi, class, kapag tinusok mo siya sa butt, nistab mo siya sa, sa butt, it could lead to a bigger hole. Maka mahirapan kayo magbasa, mag-read ng organization. Stab tube. Sometimes a straight wire is used instead of a loop. Of course, when we're all done, we need to re-sterilize the loop. Ten seconds. Okay. So that's how you would perform your uh, inoculation on a but in a, on a slant, a butt, and a butt slant, and even in a prop. Now, let's watch your streaking naman class sa tape, specifically yung semi-quantitative. In this video lesson, we're going to learn how to streak a Petri plate. Normally, when we streak a Petri plate, we want to streak it in such a way that eventually we see single isolated colonies somewhere on the plate. And since there are hundreds of millions of bacteria on the inoculating loop to begin with, it takes a lot of spreading and respreading to separate the bacteria to get single colonies. But this is an essential technique we need to master. Now, to guide you in the streaking, we normally have you label the plate, as we see here, dividing it into three sectors. And what we're going to be doing is streaking the bacteria just on sector one, so we cover pretty much the whole area of that sector. Then we're going to sterilize the inoculating loop and use a sterile loop to spread some of the bacteria in sector one over sector two and spread that out. Then we're going to sterilize the inoculating loop again and use that to spread some of the bacteria from sector two over sector three. And it's in this sector we'll probably see isolated colonies. So we begin the same way. We sterilize our inoculating loop by putting it in the back to incinerator for 10 seconds. Then we pick up our pure culture of bacteria, in this case E. coli again, remove the cap with the little finger of the loop hand, flame the tube for three seconds, remove a loop full of E. coli, flame the tube for three seconds, replace the cap, and set it back down. Then we take our Petri plate, and as we mentioned under the tips, we're going to raise the lid just enough to get the loop in, we're going to streak sector one, uh, which is at the 12 o'clock position, by going back and forth, starting at 12 o'clock over the whole plate, pulling it towards you until we've covered sector one. Then we're going to sterilize the loop. Stick it in the back to incinerator for 10 seconds so we kill any bacteria on the loop. Now, we can't take our hot loop and immediately spread out bacteria or we'd kill the bacteria with a hot loop. So what we're going to do is let it cool either maybe 15, 20 seconds or more commonly, we just stick the loop in the auger at the edge where we're not going to be streaking and you'll hear it sizzle and then it's cool. Now, the bacteria now in sector one, we're going to rotate that plate. So sector one is sitting at nine o'clock. Then we're going to open up the plate. We're going to take our sterile loop. We're going to drag it through sector one twice and spread that out over sector two. One, two, and then spread it out over sector two. 
without dragging it through again. So we've taken a few of the bacteria in sector one, spread those out over sector two. Now we're going to sterilize the loop for 10 seconds again, so we kill any bacteria on it. We're going to stick it in the auger to cool at the very edge. We're going to rotate the plate so the bacteria sitting at sector two are now at nine o'clock and now we can drag them over into sector three. So we open the lid. We go up to 12 o'clock over into sector two. We drag that through twice to pick up some bacteria and then spread that out over sector three without dragging it through and being very careful not to touch sector one. At that point, we're done with the streaking. We burn the remaining bacteria off the inoculating loop, 10 seconds in the backdone incinerator. While we're on the topic of Petri plates, I'd also like to demonstrate how to take bacteria off of a Petri plate. In the previous lessons, <clears throat> we showed you how to take bacteria out of a culture tube and then use that to inoculate our broth tubes or our slant tubes, our stab tubes, our petri plates. But often in lab, we're gonna be taking bacteria off of a petri plate. And so uh, we start out the usual way. We would sterilize the inoculating loop for 10 seconds. Now, the only thing we really have to do a little differently with a petri plate is we can't scrape the bacteria straight off the plate with a hot loop or we would fry all the bacteria. So once the inoculating loop comes out of the backdone incinerator, we open up the lid enough to get the loop in, and then we're gonna stick it in the auger to cool over the very edge where nothing's growing. And then we scrape off a small amount of bacteria, and then we can use that for our inoculation. For example, if we're gonna inoculate a broth tube, we would remove the cap with a little finger as usual flame the tube, put in the bacteria, flame the tube, and cap. And then of course, since there's a lot of bacteria clinging to the loop since it came off of a Petri plate, we put it back in the back to incinerator for 10 seconds. So yes, on our last meeting last Tuesday, I've taught you on how to make your media preparation as well as your inoculation technique. Now, for our meeting today, we're going to talk about the methods of incubation. So when you say incubation class, this is how you would grow your bacteria. Now, let's talk about the equipment used in incubation. Now, that equipment is known as your incubator. And an incubator class is an insulated, enclosed device that provides an optimal condition of temperature, humidity, and other environmental conditions required for the growth of an organism. So, basically, class, an incubator would mimic mimics would mimic when you say mimic class ginagaya kinakopy your incubator would mimic or copy the body's temperature and remember the body's temperature would allow organisms specifically your bacteria to grow now, routine incubators class would have, an, uh, in microbiology lab, would have a set temperature at 35 plus minus 2 degrees centigrade and have 3 to 5 percent carbon dioxide. So usually class, ang temperature ng incubator nyo would range from 33 degrees centigrade to 37 degrees centigrade. So do remember that class in your internship or even in your face-to-face. -face. Whenever you see an incubator, the temperature on its uh, on the machine on the incubator should range from 33 to 37 degrees. 
kapag nakita nyo, if you saw it less than 33, let's say nasa 32, or even nasa 40 degrees yan, you have to report that. That is considered a defective. Sira, broken, or damaged, or my problem yung incubator nyo. Here are the environmental factors class in your bacteria. You have to consider. Now, the first one would be the temperature. So for fungi, they would usually go grow at 28 to 30 degrees centigrade. Class, can you answer what are the two types of fungi? Two main types of fungi class that you may encounter. Does anyone know what are the two types of fungi? Anyone knows, class, what are the two types of your fungi? One would start with the letter M. Yes. Hi, sir. Sala na doon. Sir, kay M mo mo ba? Pero, is it as commisit, sir, in passageomisits? Ah, hindi, hindi, hindi. Ah, what? Yes, Miss Bilanio. Mold, sir. Indeed. Okay, mold is one. What's the second one? Yeast. All right, it's your molds and your yeast. Now, um, this is the general temperature where your fungi would grow class. But when it comes to a specific type of fungi, whether it's mold or it's yeast, this will be taught to you in your bacteriology too, but uh, in your microbiome too. But just to have you a, just to give you an idea class, yung mold nyo would grow at room temperature. Okay, if ma-notice nyo, class, may mga molds kayo na makikita sa CR nyo na uh, kulay black or kulay ano, iba-iba, they would usually grow at room temperature. Now, yung room temperature nyo would range from 20 to 25 degrees centigrade. While your yeast, class, would grow at body temp. So, yung yeast nyo would require an incubator for them to grow. They would usually range from 35 to 37 degrees centigrade. Then some bacteria and viruses and acid fast bacilli would grow at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade. Now it is important to take note that some bacteria would need special attention. So class, like, um, like in some humans, there are certain variations. Like some humans would have a higher metabolism, they would require this type of diet. Some humans prefer to be vegetarian, some pre prefer to have a keto diet, some prefer to be just purely uh, fish diet and so on. Now, your bacteria class would require certain attention or certain factors for them to survive. And one of those would be in the temperature. Now, one bacteria, the bacteria Campylobacter jejuniae, would grow best at 42 degrees centigrade. So you're, you're required to have an incubator that would have a temperature of 42 degrees centigrade. Then we also have your Listeria monocytogenes, which can grow at 4 degrees to 43 degrees centigrade, but would grow best at 20 degrees to 40 degrees centigrade. Then we have your Yersinia enterocolitica, which would grow at 4 degrees to 43 degrees, but would also grow best at 20 degrees to 40 degrees centigrade. Okay, just to have... Just to give you an idea, class, itong dalawang bacteria na to, these two bacteria, the Listeria and the Yersinia, are both known to cause food poisoning. Now, here's a question. Based on this temperature, 
four degrees. Can you tell me why it can cause food poisoning based on the temperature class? Um, hilaw, sir. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Ano ba ang four degrees class? What 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 temperature is that? What do you call that? Diba meron tayong body temp, meron tayong room temp. What is your four degrees? So, ang body temp natin would be 35 to 37. Ang room temp natin is 20 to 25. What about this 4 degree centigrade? What do you call this temperature? Refrigerator it's temperature. Too... <laughs> okay, it's your refrigerator temperature. So, back to my question. How would it cause food poisoning? <laughs> Itong dalawang to. Specifically, itong gersin niya niya, class. Grabe yan, magkakos ng enterocolitis sa, sa bituka ng tao. Anyways, so how would it cause poisoning based on your answer na ref temp yung 4 degrees? Okay, they flourish at that temperature, sir. So, kung, nag, so kung nag flourish sila sa temperature, what happens? Pwede sila mag-bind sa food. Okay, so they would be found in your refrigerators, class. And di ba ang refrigerators nyo are your storage of food? Mr. Fernandez, pag nag store ka ba ng pagkain, do you, do you put uh, a cover on it? Nilalagyan mo ba ng balok? Um, I forget the name siya. Itong do plastic na do stretchable. Okay, you, you put a, ano, what you call that plastic ba? Uh, cling wrap. Ayun yung cling wrap niya. Yung, you put, would put a cling wrap. So, not all, not everybody would put a cling wrap. So there are cases where in, if you put the food in the refrigerator without any cover, there's a possibility that um, your list, listeria, in even in worse uh, cases, your yersinia could grow in the refrigerator. That is why, class, it is a very important that at least once a month, you would clean your refrigerators because certain bacteria could grow even at ref temperature. So again, your Campylobacter jejuni would grow best at 40 de 42 degrees. Your Listeria would grow between 4 degrees to 43, but would grow best at 20, 20 to 42 degrees. Same with your, with your Listeria. Your Sinia can also grow at 4 degrees to 43 degrees, but would grow best at 20 to 40 degrees centigrade. Now, let's talk about the temperature again. Now, your microorganisms class are also classified based on their optimum temperature requirement. So when you say optimum temperature requirement class, this is considered the best temp for them to grow. So it is best temperature class for them to grow. Now we have your so-called psychrophiles. Back on topic. So we have your psychrophiles, which forms and grow best at low temperature. So an example of this class is your Listeria monocytogenes and your Yersinia enterocolitica. For, for better understanding class, whenever you would hear the psychrophiles, these are called loving bacteria then we have your mesophiles now your mesophiles class this is the one 
common to most bacteria. So ito yung temperature where most bacteria would grow. So we have a temperature between 30 to 37 degrees. That is why class, your incubator is always set at that range, yung 33 to 37. Because most bacteria would be included, would be able to grow in that range. Then we have your thermophiles. Now your thermophiles naman class are what you would consider heat-loving bacteria. So mahilig sila sa mga hot temperatures. They could survive in hot springs. An example of your thermophiles would be your mycobacterium thermo thermo resistible resistible they would grow best at 50 to 60 degrees and they are considered heat loving then we also have your hyper thermophiles with gro which grows best above 100 degrees centigrade Now, psychrophiles and thermophiles are found environmentally in places such as the Arctic seas and even hot springs. So, your psychrophiles, your cold loving, could even grow in the Arctic seas. Sobrang lamig. Now, most bacteria are mesophiles, and this is the reason why lab incubators are usually set at 35 plus minus 2 degrees centigrade. Now, we have also to consider class the environmental factors. Now, when I say uh, when I say one of those would be on the gas or air requirements. Now, the first one would be your strict obligate aerobes. Now, when you say strict or obligate, it would refer to being required. Required. Now, they would require oxygen for growth uses oxygen as the final electron acceptor in aerobic respiration. So basically, class, your strict, uh, strict uh, obligate aerobes will die, dies if there is no oxygen. There is no oxygen. An example of your obligate aerobes class would be your Brucella, uh, Francisella, and another one would be your uh, Micrococcus. So these three organisms are example of your strict or obligate aerobes. They would require oxygen for growth. So kapag walang oxygen, if there is no oxygen class, they would not be able to grow and they will die. Then we also have your facultative. Now, your facultative class, these are anaerobes. Facultative aerobes class. These are anaerobes that can still, that can survive. Even with, um, even with oxygen. So facultative aerobes class are anaerobes that can still grow even in the presence of oxygen. Then we also have your strict or obligate anaerobes. So this time naman class, they would only grow in the absence of oxygen. So presence of oxygen would cause them death. They would not be able to grow in the presence of oxygen. So just remember, class, the word, um, diba, when you use the prefix an, that would refer to without. Aerobes would refer, refer to organisms that would require air. So do remember those para mas madali nyo ma-memorize. 
Then facultative aerobes naman class are aerobes that can still live, that can survive even without oxygen. In an aerobic condition, they would generate energy by mainly by fermentation. So if you're going to be asked in your quiz or in your exam, how would facultative and aerobes generate energy? The answer would be via fermentation. So during aerobic condition, they switch to aerobic respiration. Then we also have your aerotolerant and aerobes. Exclusively anaerobic because it generates energy by fermentation. They are not killed by oxygen because they live by fermentation alone, whether or not oxygen is present in their environment. So basically, class, they are able to tolerate conditions with or without oxygen. Okay, um, balik pala ako dito, class. An example of your obligate aerobes would be your... Marzicella, Frisella. Facultative aerobes naman, class, would be your Corinibacterium diphtheriae. Then your strict, ob strict anaerobes naman, class, would be in their... Um, Example would be Fusobacterium. Fusobacterium. Bacteroides. Bacteroides and as well as um, Clostridium. Yeah. Clostridium species take note of that. And then another one, yung aerotolerant nyo class, an example would be your lactobacillus. Then we also have your micro or aerophiles which would grow best when oxygen is low. So grows best When oxygen is low. An example of this class is your Campylobacter jejuni. Now, si Campylobacter jejuni class would grow best in what you call the condition Campigas. Now, this was a board qu exam question class when I was uh, binigay dun sa, it was given to those taking uh, the board exam a year before us. So 2013 ako nag boards, 2012 to tinano. The question was, what is the composition of your campigas? So your campigas class is usually compo is composed of 5% oxygen, 10% carbon dioxide, and composed of 85% nitrogen. And as the as their characteristic ang Campylobacter nyo is a micro aerophile, they would grow best when oxygen is at low level. Then we also have your capnophiles. Now when you would encounter the capnophiles class, these are CO2 loving bacteria, carbon dioxide loving bacteria class. They would grow best in conditions enriched with carbon dioxide. So how would you remove um, oxygen in a certain, in a certain um, environment? You would do that class by using a candle. Specifically, in flame. Niya. Remember class, ang flame would use oxygen. As long as there is oxygen class, there would be a flame. Pag wala na yung, um, 
a sign that there is no more oxygen class in an environment if the candle is if the candle light is removed. So here are some uh, aeration and gaseous composition of the atmosphere. So we have your oxygen and carbon dioxide requirements. So for the aerobes class, they would require 21% oxygen, 0 0.03 carbon dioxide. For the anaerobes, uh, we have 0% oxygen and 5 to 10% carbon dioxide. There, there could be 80 to 90% nitrogen and 5 to 10% hydrogen. For the micro aerophiles, ex oxygen could be between 5 to 10 percent. Carbon dioxide could be 8 to 10 percent. While your capnophiles would be 15 percent. And then the carbon dioxide would be 5 to 10 percent. Now, Aerobic incubation class would be the most common type of incubation performed in the laboratory. Because remember, most of your bacteria class, most bacteria are, are aerobic. Okay, um, just to test your knowledge class, I have a question. Give me a sample, a specimen sample, where you could isolate where you would be able to isolate an aerobic bacteria. Can you give me a sample class where you could isolate an aerobic bacteria? Body sample. or a body specimen? I'll try to answer. Sputum? Uh, no. Your sputum is exposed to air. Diba? Kasi galing sa lungs yan. Anyone? CSF. Anyone? Okay, CSF. Yes. CSF. What else? CSF? Ano pa? Anaerobic to class, ha? So... They shouldn't be exposed to air or oxygen, carbon dioxide, bawal sila nyan. They would die. So what specimen? Mag suprapubic aspiration, sir, pwede? Uh, suprapubic what? Aspiration, aspiration of urine. Yes, pende. Oh, good. Yes, that's one. Suprapubic. Good. So you could use suprapubic urine. What else? Bio, sir. Uh, any answer? Bile. Bile, yes. Okay, pwede. So here's a question, class. How would you collect an anaerobic sample? How would you collect them? Imagine, inutusan kay ng doctor in your internship. Oh, go collect. Uh, I want you to isolate an anaerobic sample of this uh, no, patient. How would you collect that? So you would collect them class by uh, needle aspiration. 
So most uh, anaerobic organisms class would be collected via uh, most samples kasi class would tend to be in body fluids. Yan, dyan yung siya makokollect yung mga anaerobes. While yung aerobes yung class, they could be wounds, discharges, anything na can be exposed to air. So most bacteria class are usually collected from such uh, location. So the incubator used here is usually set at 35 degrees plus minus 2 and would have 3 degrees, 3% 3 to 5% carbon dioxide and are humidified. Anaerobic and capnophilic incubation. So class, um, to produce that required environment for your capnophilic, you may use what we call the gas pack jar. Now your, your gas pack jar class would contain the following. The first one would be the envelope. Now, yung envelope nyo class would generate CO2 and hydrogen upon water addition or by the moisture produced on the other plates. So, um, mamaya ko sa'yo show you what an envelope would look like. Then, there's also your palladium catalyst which forms water by combining the hydrogen and oxygen inside the jar. So, your gas pack jar class, um, it doesn't technically have, you have to pour water in it. Instead, you would have what we call the palladium catalyst. Now, yung palladium catalyst yung class would auto automatically combine hydrogen and oxygen forming that moisture inside the jar. Then we also have your indicator strip. Now, your indicator strip class would be either impregnated with methylene blue or resazorin to indicate an aerobiosis. So for methylene blue class, ang original color ng methylene blue nyo, in the presence of oxygen, they would be blue. But once there is no more oxygen class, it would become colorless. While your resazorin, another indicator, in the presence of oxygen is colorless, but in its absence, it would become pink. So do take note of that. So let me show to you your gas pack. Okay. Here is your gas pack class, your gas pack chart. Here we have class your envelope. Now your envelope would contain sodium bicarbonate and sodium borohydride. Now once this gets wet, mabasa siya class, it would release carbon dioxide. Then we have your an aerobic indicator, which is the methylene blue. And remember, if it is with oxygen, it is color blue. But once oxygen is removed class, it would now become colorless. So, it's uh, para siyang candle jar class. So, you have a single jar inside it, you would put the envelope. You would also put the Petri dish. Then make sure that it is properly sealed. Then we have your palladium catalyst, which would mix oxygen and hydrogen to produce the moisture. Um, in, in the practice class dito sa Pilipinas, very rare yung may encounter itong gas pack jar na to. What you would encounter class is this. Balik ako ha. I'll go back. What you're going to encounter class is this. Itong tinatawag nating candle jar. Now, sa candle jar class, the one that you would be using to remove oxygen is the candle. Now, as I said earlier, the flame would consume oxygen. And once oxygen is consumed, as an indicator class, ang indicator nyo dyan na wala ng oxygen is the um, Turning off, ano yung term? Uh, absence. Absence of the flame. Of the flame. Yung namatay na yung apoy class. So kapag namatay na yung apoy, that's a sign that there is no more oxygen inside the, the candle jar. Then you're gonna put the lid, the glass jar. Now the reason class why they prefer can, candle jar class because this is a very inexpensive method. Mura lang siya class and you could reuse this as long as you have a candle. 
So this is usually used gun class for those um, anaerobic organisms and those that are aerotolerant and microaerophiles. Now, your gas pack system is useful for laboratories processing small numbers of anaerobic specimens. A pouch can be used to incubate one or two agars. Then we also have your holding jars, which are anaerobic jars with loosely fitted lids attached by rubber tubing to nitrogen gas. It is used as a keeper of inoculated plates with pending incubation to minimize oxygen exposure. Then another one would be your so-called glove box. So your glove box class is recommended for laboratories processing. This is usually used for labs processing a lot of a lot of anaerobic organisms. Sensya na kay class na may nahack daw kasi yung Facebook ng kuya ko kaya Hingira muna yung phone ko. Alright, back on topic. Your anaerobic chamber or your glove box is made up of molded or flexible clear plastic. Now, the latter is the most common type. So, we have your former and your latter. So, ito yung latter. It is made up of flexible clear plastic. Later, I'll show you a video on what an anaerobic chamber is. Now, specimens and other materials are placed inside the chamber through an airlock. All work from inoculation through workup is performed inside a chamber by just inserting your hand in a gloves or sleeves that are attached in the chamber. Then we also have your microaerophilic. You can use here class your candle jar. Now this jar is designed to create a microaerophilic environment. Medium and candle are both placed inside the large screw cup jar. The candle in the jar will burn and consume oxygen inside, reducing the oxygen level. The resulting reduction of oxygen provides a suitable environment for microaerophilic organisms. So, aside from microaerophiles class, this could be also used for your capnophilic organisms. Um, then, ang mga yung may iwan kasi dyan class are very high concentrations of carbon dioxide. Then we have to consider also the incubation time class. Now, most cultures would require two days or 48 hours. Then some anaerobic cultures would require a very long time class, from three, three to five days for final identification. Now, um, when it comes to incubation time classic class, another factor you have to consider is whether the organism is fastidious. Now, when they are fastidious class, they are very difficult to grow. Did you know, class, that your mycobacterium tuberculosis could grow as long as eight weeks? So two months class bago sila tumubo. Mayroon kaming na-encounter na nagkaroon lang siya ng growth. A single colony. A single colony class. Uh, it grew at the seventh week, dun siya tumubo. So you have to monitor it on a weekly basis. Ganun siya ka, katagal. So but for most cultures, it would require two days. For an aerobes, it would usually range from three to five days for final identification. Now let's talk about the cultural characteristics of bacteria. So when I say cultural characteristics, the appearance of the colonies. So we have your form, the punctiform, the circular, the filamentous, the irregular, the rhizoid, the spindle. For the elevation, we have the flat, raised, convex, pulbonate, pulbonate. For the margin, we have the entire on the late lobe, arrows, and filamentous internal. Okay, uh, for you to better understand this class, I'm going to show you a video. A video, rather a picture, para mas maganda. Instead of this drawing, wait lang ah. So you can have a better 
pay, appreciate, ma appreciate yung itsura niya. Pasang ko lang siyang ginawa kasi. Okay, this one. Ayan. From the... Okay. So, we were talking about kanina the form. We have your punctiform, circular, filamentous, irregular, right side, and spindle. So, this is the appearance class of your circle. So, basically, class, they are colonies with a circular or spherical in appearance. Then we have your irregular. So they would have uh, uneven shapes. Then we have your filamentous or your rhizoid. They would have branching appearance. So these are the most common types you would encounter in your laboratory. Then we have your elevation. So we have your flat, raised, convex, fulvonate, and ombonate. So let's take a look at them. So this is your umbonate class. Medyo raised siya. It has a raised protrusion at the middle. Then we also have your raised margin. Um, they would be uh, increase yung, yung elevation. And then we also have your margin, such as your entire undulate, filiform, curled, and lobate. So, Here's an example class of your entire. So we're talking about here class yung edge no colony. So if you look at the colony, the edges, it would be on a spherical in appearance. Well, for your undulate class, if you notice the edges are somewhat um, wavy. Here's an irregular one. And this is your filamentous. So para siyang nag-branch type. I hope you were able to better appreciate it with them. And we also have class your op opacity. So opaque, translucent, and iridescent. So your opaque would have not clear bacteria or organisms. While your translucent would have a clear bacteria, while your iridescent would shine in appearance. Then we have also the texture of your bacterial colony. So the texture could be dry, it could be moist, it could be viscid. So when you say viscid, the colony would stick to the loop. Then we also have your mucoid or mucus-like colonies. Um, certain bacteria class could produce odor. So once you've opened the Petri dish or the tube, they are able to produce certain odors. Now, an example would be an old sap odor, which is produced by your Staphylococcus aureus. 
Then another odor would be your fruity or grape-like odor produced by your Sodomonas, Sodomonas aeruginosa. Then putrid produced by Proteus mirabilis, mousy produced by your Haemophilus species, and a freshly plowed field produced by your Nocardia. Plus, meron bang nakatira sa inyo sa palayan or sa sakahan? I've never smelled a freshly plowed field. Meron na bang nakaamoy sa inyo ng ganyan? Yes, Mr. Fernandez. Ikaw? Yes, sir. Because recently, oh. um, we tried to stay sa farm kasi masyado ng toxic sa city. So, anong, ano, anong smell ng isang freshly plowed field? Um, it depends, sir, if ano, ang crop is either mice or palay. So, sa palay, sir, parang ano siya, bagong flower. As of oh. sa parang bagong gawa na flower or bagong, um, bagong meal na rice. Hmm. Mismo pag-open mo ng sako or ng sako, so, uh -oh. yun yung mga naamoy mo. That's oh. how it smells like while oh. sa mais na naman. Parang sweet corn siya. Okay. Galing ah. I've never, ano, I've never smelled some, something like that yung pag mag-open ka na. But that's good. At least you have an idea. Okay. Thank you, Sir Fernandez. And then certain bacteria class could also produce different colors. Now, depending on their genus, a white color would be produced by your coagulase negative staphylococci. Plus, what is the species of your coagulase negative staphylococci? Anong, anong species niya? Has this been discussed sa lecture niyo, yung Staphylococcus? So what is the, what is, what, you, what is the species of that coagulase negative stuff? Anoclas. You know what species is that? Yung staff? Epidermidus, sir. All right, very good. So your staff in the Cocos aureus class, you would identify this because it is coagulase positive. Well, your S. epidermidis is coag negative. Alam nyo, class, sa board exam, ganyan lang ang mga tanong, honestly. Ganyan lang kadali. Uh, most questions, yung mga very easy questions, would be asked. You would be asked on the basics. Kaya ang suggestion ko talaga, whenever I would review someone, AA, a school. Uh, last, last month, nag-review ako ng mga taga Nueva Ecija na Good Samaritan on molecular. So, I just try teaching them yung, yung basic. Kasi na-notice ko, class, ever since nag-online setting, ang hina ng foundation nila sa mga basics. Kasi na-notice ko din, some teachers would just tell the student, oh, watch this, panorin mo to sa YouTube, panorin mo. Which is para sa akin, maling-mali. Kasi kawawa yung bata. Well, regardless if that's a self-study time, you still have to guide them. You have to build kahit yung, yung pinaka-foundation lang nila. Kaya nga, whenever I would ask them during the review, talagang nahihirapan sila. So I had to go from the, ano, from the bottom. Then another species class would produce gray colonies would be your enterococcus. Then yellow would be produced by your micrococcus and the non-pathogenic Neisseria species. And a buff color would be produced by your dipteroids. So that's one of the good things class about your bacteria. Some bacteria have unique characteristics. Iba nga, if you recall, si, si E. coli nyo, 
what does E. coli class produce in EMB? Ano prino produce niya sa EMB? If you recall in our discussion last time on the media. Green metallic sheen, sir. Okay, it would produce a green metallic sheen sa EMB. So that's those are one of the things you could easily use to identify the bacteria or the organisms. Then let's talk about the pigment. So pigments class and an are inherent inherent capacity characteristic of a specific organism confined generally to the colony. Although some pigments would diffuse through the culture medium. So an example of colony pigment would be green, sometimes metallic sheen in your Pseudomonas serogenosa, brick red class in your Serratia, Serratia, Mar, Mercesens. Then blue for your Clovera species, purple for Chromobacterium violation, brown black with your Frebotella melaninogenica. Plus, just to give you a clue, there are certain bacteria class that would have, that would be named by their color. An example class would be your Chromobacterium violation. So the word Meron ka ng idea kagad daw. You, you would see the word viola. So, this would be somewhat related to the color violet. So, and the nearest color code, uh, color scheme would be the purple. Then we also have your melanin. Melaninogenica. Wait lang, class, uh, post. Melaninogenica, and if you recall, your melanin would often produce the brown color. So, may idea na kayo. So, try to look at the names class. They would sometime give you an idea on their characteristics. Then, one of the most uh, important things to remember class, this is often asked in, quest in quizzes and even in exams. Yung serasya nyo, Marcesens. They would be characterized by the, their color, their pigment, brick red. Now, let's talk about your beta hemolysis. So, certain bacteria class are capable of hemolysis. They could destroy, they could destroy, um, they're able to destroy red blood cells. Now, this would be done in your blood agar plate. Now, um, when you say beta hemolysis class, this would refer to your full hemolysis. Basically, class, sirang sira yung RBC, damage or destroyed talaga yung RBC. Now, you would identify this class by their white appearance. Puti class, because wala talaga yung RBC. There is none, no remnants, no hemoglobin, no heme, no globin remains. While your are alpha hemolysis are characterized by a partial partial hemolysis. Now this would be characterized class by whitening 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 in the periphery sa gilid. Then we also have your gamma hemolysis or no hemolysis. Walang whitening class. You could see the entire colony, um, no change. Now an example class of your beta hemolytic bacteria would be your staph aureus. Well, for a partial hemolytic or alpha hemolytic stra uh, for gamma hemolytic na lang, we have your micrococcus. And then for your partial hemolytic, we have your, um, if I recall, this is your strep pneumonia. 
Bishop to Kokus. Limon. Tama ba? Wait lang ah. Yes, oh, tama class. Streptococcus pneumoniae and viridan strep. Streptococcus viridans. So again, your beta hemolysis are full hemolysis. An example would be your SRUs. For gamma hemolysis or no hemolysis, we have your micrococcus. While for your alpha hemolysis, it would be partial hemolysis characterized by whitening at the periphery. And it would be under that would be your streptococcus pneumoniae and streptococcus viridans. May question kayo class for this. So this is one of the common characteristics class ng mga gram-positive organisms. They are capable of hemolysis. So they would usually be identified class by their capability to cause hemolysis or Partial hemolysis. Okay. Let's now proceed to your growth of microorganisms on others. So, kanina, I would discuss yung growth nila on, on plates. So, let me show you again para mas better yung appreciation nyo dito. Let me show you a better, better picture of them. Sadly, wala pala akong picture nila. Okay, tuloy tayo sa top. Okay, so this time naman class, we would proceed with your colonies on your agar slant. So kanina, earlier, we discussed on the plates. Now, they would be classified based on the abundance of growth. Are they small? Are they moderate? Or are they large? So is the colony small? Are they moderate? Or are they large? Then we have the optical feature. So same in plates. Pigmentation niya in class would be same in plates. Meron din, meron din siyang mga ganito class. Uh, it could be undulated, it could be filamentous. Same all along with your plates. And then, pigmentation is also same in the plates. Now, for the form class, there are six. We have your filiform, econolate, beaded, effuse, arborescent, and rhizoid. Okay. Before we tackle this class, um, can anyone tell me what is the mode of inoculation for your slant? Class, how would you inoculate on a slant? Zigzag pattern. So we have your zigzag streaking then so he streak nyo siya in a zigzag pattern now certain bacteria class would often produce a thread like growth with smooth edges an example of that would be your filiform then we have your echinolate which is a continuous thread like growth with irregular edges so um this one would be a branching naman class yung filiform nyo naman thread like lang siya parang straight Straight, straight line with smooth edges. Where you accumulate naman straight line with thread-like growth. 
Then we have your beaded characterized by a blob or string of pearls or droplet colonies. Then if used, which are characterized by thin spreading growth pattern. Then arborescent, characterized by tree-like growth. And rhizoid, characterized by root-like growth. Um, the one that you're going to encounter class the most would be this rhizoid and as well as this arborescent. Itong beaded nyo class, you could encounter this sa pseudomonas nyo. Which would often very bihira mo lang naman may encounter yun. Then, let's talk about your agar pot naman. So, same lang din class, abundance of growth, same, small, moderate, and large. Optical features, same in plates. Pigmentation, same in plates. Form, same in slant then. But this time, they're able to form gas formation. So imagine this would be the tube. This would be the butt. In stab mo yan. Now, how would you know if there is formation of gas? When the agar breaks. Nagkaroon ng opening class. So, ito yung test tube. Nag-stab ka. So, compact lang yung agar nyo. What you would see, class, is that there would be cracks and opening. And when that happens, class, it is a char characteristic of gas formation. Because your gas would put pressure on the agar, causing it to elevate or to open up. Now, um, in agar bat class, we have what you call liquefaction. So, liquefaction is the ability of the bacteria ability of your bacteria to turn agar into liquid. Okay, before I tackle this, can anyone tell me what's the mode of inoculation for your butt? For your agar butt? Or your deep? Paano kayo mag -in inoculate class? Stab, sir. Okay, you would do it by stabbing. So we have your cratery form, infundibuliform, saccate, and stratiform. So this is your cratery form. Class. So you would form a crater on the top. The bacteria would liquefy the upper part, then it would also liquefy the areas where it would stab. Then we also have your effundibility form characterized by a funnel shape. So this one. So this time class, almost the upper part is liquefied and then it will form a funnel shape. Then we have your saccate or tubular shape. This is elongated. So and then stratiform complete liquefaction of the upper, upper half medium. So, kalahati class, upper part is entirely liquefied. Then, let's talk about your broth. So, your broth, i-dip nyo lang class. Abundance of growth are scanty, moderate, and abundant. For the surface, we have your flocculent and your pellicle. So, flocculent are flaky aggregates. So, ganyan siya. These are like, um, ano bang flakes? Ito. This one is a better explanation. Parashang dried, dried cracked skin. Then your pellicle is a thick pad like growth. So then we have your subsurface, turbid or granular. Then sediment, granular, flocculent, viscid, or flaky. So that ends.